Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. Currently, I am on my way to my local Porua showroom center to check out the brand new Porua Axia and take it out for a test drive and also check out the interior and some fancy details about the brand new Axia. So without further ado, let's get on with the test drive. Okay, so here is the first person view of the interior of the brand new Proto Axia, the top spec which is the advanced version. So I'm going to do a short test drive to get a feel of how it is. So let's have a go. Okay, so as you can see the reverse camera is a sort of a wide angle. It shows clearly what is around, um, gives you a good look of how the behind of your car is basically. All right. So now going into drive. Okay, so let's set off. Okay, road is clear and slowly but surely. So right off the bat, I can notice that um, from the get go, from zero, from standstill, basically, the there is some prominent uh, sound from the engine, but. As the car comes into a cruise, like I am right now, going at like 60 kilometers or so, um, basically where you are not uh, revving the engine so much. Oh, that is the lane departure warning in action. Um, I'll get back to that after this. But basically, uh, when it comes to the acceleration of the engine, like right now, okay, so when it is accelerating, there is some slight noise. But as you are cruising along, uh, at a fixed speed, for example 60, 70, 80, the engine becomes relatively quiet and it's quite peaceful for those of you who appreciate quiet drives and you won't have to necessar necessarily worry about getting too much soundproofing for the car unlike uh, previous models like for example the Myvi that I've been using um, at higher speeds or even lower speeds, you need uh, like sometimes I do uh, think about getting soundproofing, but so far I haven't had the necessity to do so. But for the Axia so far, I'm actually enjoying the you know the quietness of the cabin. But I'll do another test of this sound at higher speeds once I get to a further straight road. So going back to the lane departure warning that you might have heard just now, you might not be able to see it on camera but it is uh, reminiscent of the uh, lane departure warning in some previous models such as the Ativa so that uh, essentially there there is a system in the car which tracks your lane and of course it's helpful like for example if you are not uh, you know focusing or if you happen to space out and basically tap press and your <laughs> uh, lane you are able to the, the car like alerts you of uh, if you are departing departing your lane, so so far so good. I, I love how um, how gentle the car feels, basically. But I'll, of course, I'll be doing a test with the power button which we have over here. Now, speaking of the power button over here on the right uh, side of the steering wheel, um, unlike the Ativa, the Axia does not have a turbo. However, uh, with the brand new engine, the DCVT engine, uh, I love to experience how to, uh, how the power button performs so I'll do it in a straight road which uh, I will do after this okay so I'm gonna give it a little bit of acceleration okay so pickup is a bit slow of course with the new engine but initially when uh, for example like um, 10 kilometers per hour to uh, 50 or so, it does uh, struggle a little bit. However, once you've got, uh, once you've managed to reach uh, higher speeds, it cruises along uh, easily and climbs relatively easier compared to, for example, zero to 50 or zero to 60 or so. Also, I'm not sure if you caught it on camera, but when I was under the MRT station just now, the lights dim and it showed the icon of the. Um, why is it the headlights lighting up? So that's actually a nice convenient feature that I would have loved to have on my on the Myvi that I've been using but I'm just glad that Prodo are incorporating the auto light system into their newer models so um, who knows maybe down the road 
uh, perhaps uh, a later generation. Perhaps I think I think from this point onwards, uh, Proda will incorporate the auto light system and a lot of new functions to their um, lineup of cars, such as the Axia, the Ativa, and so on and so forth. So while we're at the traffic light here, just showing a new feature. So on the right side here, um, there's quite a layout of buttons. I like the square positioning is quite nice actually um, so uh, what is it? oh traffic, uh, traffic light is green so I think I'll do a proper in look at the interior afterwards but now I will try to use the power mode and give this car a little bit more acceleration once I get past this uh, truck in front of me okay alright Okay, not bad. So, I think um, from my point of view so far, okay. Oh wow, the cornering is not too bad as well. I actually like it. It's quite nice. Like, I I, I thought the was it? It would feel a bit more. Um, how do you call it? Uh, I, I I forgot the term, but more shaky. But to my surprise, I th because like the of course the Axia has a higher center of gravity since it's a quite a short compact car, but it handled that corner quite nicely and I actually like it. And acceleration, it is a bit loud, but of course you won't be flooring your car all the time on roads, especially if you are to daily drive the car like maybe if you go for spirited drivings however like maybe it'll be um, you know a bit of a bothersome but in reality for those of the people who are buying the car for daily driving or so I think it will be good especially the fuel economy which I believe is 27 um, what is it 27 uh, <laughs> uh, 27.4 kilometers per liter so it's uh, quite a good daily car and it handles quite well and very nicely. The only uh, things that you would have to get used to would be the um, engine sound when accelerating but otherwise when cruising and with all the assists you have, the computer, all the cup holders you have um, and the screen as well and basically a uh, overhaul and refresh design, I actually like it and I think it'll be a good daily car for a lot of people out there, especially like for those of people who want the Myvi but you know uh, would prefer something a slightly a bit cheaper. I believe this car would be a good um, daily driver for a lot of people. I mean, that is of course um, the philosophy with a lot of uh, Myvi models, like the Myvi, the Ativa. Um, they 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 want to make good cars which are good for daily driving. So. Of course, um, once this car is out and about, and a lot of people have bought it, I'm sure we'll, we're bound to see a lot of aftermarket uh, mods, like perhaps different rims, because um, you would have to understand that when Proton wants to keep um, the Axia within the price range it is right now for the new models, which is from about 39000 I'll display the uh, price range on the screen right now, but in trying to maintain those prices, they would have to make some sacrifices uh, in certain areas. Oh, that would be the lane departure warning as well. So, they would have to uh, cut corners, well not cut corners, but basically not give too much uh, improvement. So, for all the models right now, all of them are using uh, the same rims. But I guess Proto would understand that a lot of my V, uh, well, not my V, a lot of Proto World owners love to get aftermarket rims so they probably thought you know what let's skip out on the rims and just keep it standard for all um, Axia variants overall I really love the advanced uh, what is it? the advanced pack which I am driving right now um, it's a shame that um, Proto are in, unable to get the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay for um, the entertainment system the infotainment system but it is understandable why they are unable to do so, like I mentioned, trying to maintain the price of the car as it is right now because getting the license to um, incorporate the Apple CarPlay is quite expensive. And plus, um, so far with the MyV I'm using, it does not have Apple CarPlay but 
um, you know, for playing music and um, using it to answer calls using the Bluetooth system is perfectly fine. The only downside that I am unable to use with the current system in my car is that uh, I'm unable to use the Google Maps feature on my phone. But you know what, that's fine, I've gotten used to it over the years. Though I would be interested to see how aftermarket sellers are going to incorporate um, the Apple CarPlay uh, system or Android Auto because from what I've seen uh, with a lot of the aftermarket sellers, the, usually the unit for the in entertainment unit they sell is a block and insert it into the uh, what is it the dash of the car. But now with the new design, which is like a floating screen sort of. I wonder how they will do it, but of course that is a thing we'll probably see down the road, down the road with uh, other content creators, perhaps. So for now, the verdict is um, I enjoyed the ride. It's smooth. It actually handles well on corners, surprisingly, for like the body shape of the car. Um, interior feels comfortable. Oh, I need to go left over here. Okay, never mind. Okay. So interior-wise, I love the seat. It's it's uh, semi bucket semi bucket seats, reminiscent of the ones in the MyV, um, and it's quite nice, com quite quite com quite comfortable. It's not too slippery. It's a mix of the uh, fabric and leather, and yeah, I just think it's comfortable and quite nice. Okay, so here we are, back at the Prodoa showroom. Plan to bring it back in, and now I will give you guys a thorough look at the interior after this. Let me just get the car parked over here. Okay, so let's have a look at the interior of the brand new Prodoa Axia. So as you can see, they've completely refreshed the interior of the latest generation of the Axia when you compare it to the previous generation. Um, perhaps if you may remember, you could probably think that the current design here is reminiscent of that in the Prodoa Ativa you know with the floating screen over here the aircon shape and also the physical well not physical well the um you know the button for the hazard light which is sort of um sticking out on its own over there and then a completely different um climate control system over here and the lock over here for the car and there's quite a lot of space down here in the center but what is really interesting is the new digital digital display over here. So let's give it a start up and see how it is in three, two, one. Look at that very cool animation you got with the um, design that you chose. So what do I mean by design by the design that you choose? Well, like the Ativa, this brand new Prado Axia has a few different designs that you can choose from. Of course, accessing the menu using um, this button, these buttons over here. So let's go to designs. So we have display number one, display number two, display number three, display number four. Of course, this is very similar to the design in Prado in the Prado Ativa, so you might be familiar with it already. But let me just show you an interesting feature on all of them. So. Um, with the new Prodo Axia, you have a power button as well to give the car a little bit more, well, so-called boost when driving. So if I were to press this power button, like right now, you can see that the center ring of the display over there turned orange. And of course, a little power icon lit up. There you go, camera focus. Okay. So this is also, of course, uh, applicable to the other designs in their own unique way. So let's turn off the power button first and switch the design to go to display design number two. So here, when I press the power button, you can see that the power button emits in a, circu a circular ring around the center of the uh, rev meter. And of course the power icon over there so now let's switch up to a different display turn off the power first design display number three and power button on 
Okay, so for display number three, it's a very minimal design. You can see that the orange only lights up as, uh, as a matter of fact at the bottom part only over there. But of course, that will be lighting up as well to, you know, give the driver um, a notification or make them aware that the power uh, button is activated. So power button off, going to the very last design, which is display number four, and power button on. Look at that. You can see a very nice detail where the those well dots marking the different revs uh, light up to become orange. So that is a really cool feature, and it's kind of crazy to think that um, Prada would incorporate this full digital display for the brand new Axia. But I guess moving forward with the times and all, um, I think it's cool that. Uh, Prodoa are stepping up their game and you know giving the Axia a full dig digital display even though the adjustable part of the screen would be the rev meter over here as the speedometer over there is completely fixed and you cannot change the design of that so once again with the power button activated a nice yellow ring comes on okay so that is the you know display meter I think it's just really cool I'm kind of envious of uh, you know, owners of the Ativa and potential owners of the Prodoa Axia uh, for having uh, this uh, full-on digital display because even the MyV facelift uh, doesn't have a full digital display. They just um, refurbish the uh, physical uh, display and having a central uh, digital display. So this is really cool. I like it. Uh, so props to Prodoa for that. So let's check out the other bits of the interior at the front um, so as I mentioned previously uh, different climate control design um, throughout the different models uh, Prodo have made like the Prodo Myvi they've you know they've um, was it they've reiterated the design they've refurbished the design to perhaps uh, optimize it in the best way they can because um, while the Prodo Myvi uh, has a very similar design I can just put an image of the Prodo Myvi's uh, climate control system uh, over here on the screen you can see that there have been there has been a little re rework re rework I can't speak rework uh, over the years of the different models so of course um, the air circulation uh, button has been shrunk down but I don't think it's a, a problem uh, at all really if anything it just looks pretty clean I guess I mean I guess it's a bunch of buttons uh, regardless but uh, I don't think that's an issue as well. So off button to turn, turn off the aircon off completely, which is pretty convenient for those of you who love to turn off your aircon. M1 for uh, aircon setting number one. M2 for aircon setting number two, which has not been set for this car as of yet. So let me just lower the fan speed so it does not interrupt the microphone. Um, I love the hazard, uh, hazard light button molding over here. Hazard light activated, hazard light off. So we have the floating, well, quote unquote, floating infotainment screen. Um, I really wish, uh, uh, was it, Prada would get the Apple CarPlay for the Axia, the new Axia, because it's a shame they don't have such, um, you know, such flush. A piece of infotainment for a car like this because um, in my personal opinion while it does have all the features um, you know that you would need for an infotainment system like Bluetooth radio so on and so forth it's just so it just feels so outdated design it's so like clunky and old but you know what it is what it is it should um, if ha had Prodoa incorporated the Apple CarPlay or Android uh, auto system the Axia would be priced a little bit more expensive perhaps so up here we have the seatbelt uh, sign uh, notification system which shows you know for the rear seats who is wearing the seatbelt and who is not um, up here we have the sun visor which has a mirror will you look at that how convenient the Myvi does not have this which is very nice um, to have uh, the mirror of course and same goes wait what okay that was it I wasn't expecting for there to not be a mirror here but oh well I guess 
um, they've changed the priority on who should get the mirror. I thought both would get the mirror, but oh well, it is what it is. We have the cabin lights, similar to that of the Prodor Myvi. Um, so on the center console here, we have two cup holders and another cup holder over here. Or you can put other stuff here, of course. Um, as I mentioned just now, central locking system over here. And I love the, um, what is it? This weave design over here. This uh, weave that looks reminiscent to a carbon design. And then we have the brand new seats, which are a mixture of fabric to leather. Fabric and leather, which is quite nice, I must say. Feels very comfortable. Um, what else do we have? Of course, we have the glove box over here. Um, volume capacity, I'm not too sure, but then again, uh, most people don't fiddle with the glove box too much. Um, then we have more bottle holders over here to stuff more stuff down there. Um, seat height, of course, can be adjusted with uh, this lever over here, pushing it down to lower the uh, seat height, pulling it upwards to increase the seat height by making it taller. And uh, yeah, this is the front of the car. So, uh, and also not to mention, the steering wheel can be adjusted by the lever down here. Let me just try to adjust it. Where is it? Okay, yeah, down there. Let's give it a pull to unlock the mechanism and you will be able to push it down or push it up uh, whatever your preference is if you have uh, bigger legs you might want to raise this higher or lower it doesn't matter everyone has their own preference so time to lock this back in place for the next user of this test drive car um, let's have a look at the rear okay I should actually unlock the car Okay. okay, so here is the rear of the car. Um, you know, if the driver has long legs, unfortunately, you will not have too much leg room at the back. But as I climb into the back seat over here, while my feet may be a little bit uh, cramped by the metal bar underneath this chair, my there's a little bit of clearance here. Uh, between my knees and the chair and I think that may be attributed to this new design of the chair where they curve inside the what is it the chair like they give it a little bit of I don't know how to describe this but yeah basically it goes inward a little bit instead of just being straight up flat so that may give a little bit more space but if I climb over to the other passenger seats at the back it's quite nice the leg room I mean granted that I'm not that tall of a person and I don't have long legs um, it's not too bad actually uh, we can see that there are a lot of other new design features on this new Axia um, this sort of molding over here I'm not so sure why would they choose to make it uh, all this lining but it is what it is perhaps to give the new Axia a brand new look of course we have the automated windows I cannot open it because they are locked from the central system over there but headroom as well not too bad now let's check out the boot of the car okay so opening up the boot quite a decent and humble storage space back here it's a nice uh, tray I believe this is gear up or standard I'm not so sure but um, you can still, I think you can do a decent grocery haul uh, with the Axia. I mean, I've done a few grocery hauls myself with the MyV. Um, and I think with the Axia, I think I can do some decent uh, grocery carrying as well, like a few boxes of water, some groceries. And when you're carrying other luggage, I like this nice uh, tray uh, slot over here. You can put like a small umbrella or, you know, as people like to use nowadays, the Kusi Healing is what they call for foldable chairs. I think that would be a nice place to keep it, you know, fixed in place. Um, underneath the boot space, we have the not full size. Well, um, is this full size? I'm not so sure. Um, but we have the spare room down here. Um, it's nice that there is a spare room, of course. But I don't think it would matter because like it's fully silver. Uh, even though it's a uh, what they call it, taya kompang, 
um, it is matching the other rims of course being all silver but yeah um, I think that is all for my summary and first look at the Prodo Axia um, I know it's not the most uh, full encompassing review but hey if you guys want to check out more details on the Prodo Axia there are a bunch of um, uh, youtubers or media outlets out there that are giving full in-depth reviews of the brand new Prodo Axia for, for instance like MG3 Hub and so on and so forth so yeah, uh, I think that will be all for my first look at the brand new Prodo Axia. Um, once again, just to summarize, uh, I love how it feels on the road actually. It's not too bad when it comes to handling, it feels solid, doesn't feel too wavy. Um, the only issue I have with it would be the engine sound when you accelerate and plus you don't get off too quickly. Then again, it is an Axia with a 1 liter engine so uh, you cannot expect too much in terms of performance. But otherwise... It's quite nice. It's a quite nice uh, daily car. Um, so yeah, I think that is all for this video. Leave a like if you like. Thank you for watching this far. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.